with Behavior Education at Spirit Keeper Animal Sanctuary. Welcome to Serpente Sunday for January 15th, 2023. I get this question a lot. Why does my snake balk at being touched? Why don't they like me picking them up? Why don't they like me touching them? Well, I'm gonna answer that for you. Let's look at some evidence-based reasons why. Snakes don't generally like to be touched by other animals, and that includes people, and they don't like being picked up. It's really scary for them. So let's examine the reasons why. Snakes are instinctively fearful of being touched. It triggers an anti-predator response. Snakes are both predator and prey, and their natural history and natural biology in the wild means that contact with other animals, especially mammals, is typically only when they are trying to eat the other animal or when another animal is trying to eat them. And so contact during these encounters is usually agonistic, meaning it's not good contact. It's not contact in a positive, comforting way. It's one animal trying to attack or eat another. And so when they contact other animals during these encounters in the wild, it's usually at their face. Like if they're trying to eat another animal, that conflict is going to be face to face or at their tail. And that is if they are trying to get away from another animal who's chasing them and maybe from above as in a larger mammal coming from above and grabbing or biting the snake or a bird coming from above to grab hold of the snake and take them away. So when we're handling our snakes and interacting with our snakes, initially when we're trying to build that trusting relationship, we want to avoid coming at them at their face, at their tail, or directly from above. So avoid these areas when you're first starting desensitization to touch and handling, and I have a whole video about that. Here's some actual science for you. Dark expanding objects and looming stimuli are innately triggering anti-predator responses in vertebrates. And there's some evidence that they trigger the same fear responses in invertebrates as well. Cells in the brain increase their firing rate in response to dark expanding stimuli and elicit defensive responses with no prior experience by the animal. This means the animal didn't learn to be afraid of dark expanding or looming stimuli. They're just innately afraid of these things. And these cells can be found across the animal kingdom. Recordings of neural activity in the brain have revealed looming sensitive cells and manipulating these cells can both impair or elicit defensive behaviors. That means if these looming sensitive cells in your snake's brain or in your brain are messed with and manipulated, that scientists can either cause the animal to not respond to dark expanding objects and looming stimuli or cause the animal to feel afraid even when there's no presence of these dark expanding objects or looming stimuli just by stimulating these cells in the brain. So literally there are cells present in the brain sensitive to dark expanding and looming stimuli or objects which trigger a fear or a defensive response when they're activated. And that means things coming at you and things coming from above and things that are coming towards you that are dark and expand and seem bigger the closer they get to you. So there are literal reasons because of these cells in the brain that your snakes are afraid instinctually, just innately, of you coming at them from above or you coming at their face and getting really, really close to them. Another reason that your snake may balk at being touched or be fearful of you touching them or handling them, in addition to the things we've already discussed, is because you are forcing that interaction on them. Instead of allowing it to be their choice, you are intruding into their space and you are touching them or you are picking them up and they have no opportunity to opt out. So let's talk a little bit about choice and control. 
there is evidence to support that the need for control is biologically motivated. In other words, the innate need for control or perceived control has been adaptively selected for evolutionary survival. And what this means is choice is desirable and removal of choice is aversive. And you can read more in this paper by Laoti et al. called Born to Choose. It's a great paper. It has a lot of great information in it. And so, so other than in an emergency, what this means is it is always better for your snake's well-being to wait for the snake to come out of hiding on their own, remain visible, comfortable, and relaxed in your presence before you interact with them further. Choose to come out of their enclosure, approach you, investigate you, touch you, and move on to or over you. If the snake is choosing to engage in these activities, and if after having engaged in these activities, they are repeating the activities and they're seeking to engage in these activities more, it means they find it reinforcing. And it's likely because it was their choice and they didn't have anything aversive happen to them when they chose to engage in these things. This is quite the opposite from force-based interactions where you are forcing the snake out of hiding, intruding into their habitat and forcing them to come out of their enclosure and, in, and forcing them to be held and touched and interact with you. That is gonna be aversive to the snake because it's not their choice. It's gonna be scary to them and they are gonna be much less likely to trust you or to voluntarily engage in these behaviors in the future. In fact, if you force these things on them, they're more apt to hide more, come out less in your presence, and maybe even be triggered to escalate their behavior to more defensive things like striking or fleeing. So if you can make these things available to your snake, in other words, give them the opportunity to engage in these activities by their own free will and choice, you're gonna have a much better relationship down the road than if you're forcing interactions with your snake and science supports this. To learn more about the impact choice, control, and agency has on welfare, it is a main theme of many of my videos and I've even done some short courses about it. You might also consider joining our Patreon community where you get not only group interactions with me and other patrons, but you have the opportunity to have one-on-one -on -one interactions with me. And we often discuss this subject as well as many others. You can follow behavior education on social media as all of the things we do other than in an emergency are choice-based interactions, cooperative care, and consent behaviors. Consider participating in a power of choice workshop. Those are presented by Dr. Christina Spalding and trainer and behaviorist Erit Bloom. I highly recommend them and the principles apply across species. Or you can contact me directly via my website at behavioreducation.org. Thank you so much for spending time with me, for your interest in animal training and behavior. And until next time, everybody, please remember to always be kind and love your animals.